let's have a little talk about our newest product, which is uh, British Street Flower Burst. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, Steve, do you want to explain like, to everyone about, about how we approach this particular part of the schedule? Well, yeah, first of all, I was like, so changing the label on this product too. I don't particularly like it yet. I, we went down the design way, but, you know, it's irrelevant right now, that label, I mean, the product speaks for itself. So, the Flower Burst is the latest product, um, yet yeah, it's, that product was developed um, last day. It, it, we've had that product to while, we've been working on development for, that, for a, quite a while, and it's a really important product to us. It's the one we're most excited about. Uh, and that's, hence the reason earlier with the Advanced Metaboost, why that product works differently than all the Metaboost accelerators. Because we needed to make sure that people, with, with this being, what we knew we were bringing to the market is a pretty flowery product. We knew how well it worked and how shocking that some people could be shocked when they use it if they haven't already used it. Um, how well this product works and we're excited about it. So a lot of the schedule is molded by this product. Um, it's a really important product for yields, quality, and really bringing something new that hadn't been changed or established for a long time. And all the ads want to get this is quite new to many people. It's been around now for, on average to mainstream for 20 years. But before that time, most products that are in our that were currently in the market, the 40-year-old products that was used a long time ago in agricultural crops, and many long-term, you know, longer variety of flowering cycles. So you talk about varieties that, 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 that flowered over 20 weeks plus, and most pre-flowering products are based on that on that same principle, aren't yeah. they? So we came at it in an innovative way for short flowering species to, to really, you see, with a long, with, let, me, let me re elaborate, with a longer term flowering species, you, most of the products that we develop, they actually do create some stress over them. Yeah. So when, when you, although they work in one way, you also uh, don't help the plant in another way, you your plants in another way. So, You'll feed them, yes, they'll trigger bigger yields, but it'll take quite a while. They won't, they won't speed anything up or make the transition easy, will they? Because the amount of stress. What? Yeah, and is it the, yeah, sort of, it's I mean, the ratio, isn't it? Yeah, it, well, it boils down to, to the fact that, like, as you say, products, pre flowering and early flower products in the, in the industry at the moment are primarily what we found were primarily powders. Now, those powders, as Steve explained, came from the agricultural sector where they're actually, you know, they're, they're put together for much longer flowering sort of types of plants and, and arable crops, etc. So, then, so the, the ratios of phosphorus and potassium are really incorrect for short flowering plants such as ours. What we found in our experience was that there was much, much too high a phosphate level. They don't do that, but they don't really speed things up. No, but that level, that high level of phosphate too early can have a There's a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, and it, and it does have a detrimental. So, you know, effect on the vegetative growth that's still going on in early part of flower because we know it's neither really purely flower nor purely vegetative growth, it's somewhere in between. So, although you know, you, you're looking to increase the P and K ratio to really speed the flower set up and initiate a, a fuller flower set with more internodes and more flower sites, the level of phosphorus in the products that were available out there were having the detrimental effects on the veggie side of growth that was still going on. So a lot of people there. It is, it's talking about too much. Many, many products would be a similar, as an example, they might be 42% phosphorus, 30% yeah. uh, potassium, yeah. which is like, a, I'd say, a 70-30. Yeah. So it's a 70-30 mix, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was, it's been done like that for a long time, but people have kind of stuck with it and not tried to, to change things. They're trying to took one thing from one market and used it, and it's done okay. But we so, and that's, that's what led you. That's what led you, led you to think, well, this must be achievable, but in a kind of way, you know, to speed the process up. Yeah, also, you know, without stressing the plants, it's an incredible high level of foster. You know, is is you will get, you will, you will initiate a quicker flower set, but that's partially that stress reaction. Yeah, it's exactly. not natural. It's not a natural reaction. So with the flower burst, yeah. our, our our idea was to to achieve that but in a kind of way in a more gradual way than just like so that was how we came back yeah that, that was how we came and back. what we did is we decided to check we, we tried a few things and we ended up changing the ratio from a 70 percent to an 80 20 so what you've got now is 
uh, early flowering pistol with 10% phosphorus and 8% potassium. Now, what we also did is we added boron to this product. Now, we haven't really done that with other products. We've got circuits on the market with boron and other boosters. We can, as of any trace elements that are just byproducts, you know, as far as micro elements of boron. Now, in this product, we use boron on to stimulate the root growth because the plant's naturally just trying to flower and all it's trying to do at that stage when they switch from soil 12 is trying to flow down roots to say, right, I'm okay to go. That's what a lot of beginning growth is. It's, it's simple, it. isn't it? It's that really, you know, when you switch from vegetable growth to flower growth, like you said before, yeah. you know, a lot of beginning growth, they think that it's some kind of dormant phase. Yeah, they do believe that. But it's not. I'm also a bit, I did in the other day. Yeah, well you do because you patiently wait for flowers. We know that actually, 24 hours the plant senses that change in flow period. And it's panicking. Like it's yeah, it's constantly, it obviously it knows its days and number then. It's so it's the concentrating on getting those roots down, having a root spur, early flower, so that it can make use of the nutrient in the more productive later phases of flowering. So what you can actually think of the dormant phase is not, it's actually all going down, going on under, under the, exactly. in, in the root zone. Now the quicker that you can facilitate that root spur, See flowers. We, 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 we went here yes. to do it in the most kind way we could, yes. and giving it exactly what it needed at yeah. the right time yeah. to make that transition easier for the plants. Yeah. And we kind of basically every problem we've done really is about the plants' behaviour. Yeah. That's yeah. dictated the way Absolutely. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's face it, it performs so much better than we even thought. It's the most impressive product today. It is. Yeah. Most guys the, you know, the, the, the initiation of a flower, you get a clear flower set a good four or five days, even longer sometimes than normal. Much increased flower size, much shorter in the nose spacing, um, and it is it is really noticeable, especially if you've got a plant or a strain that you're really familiar with and you understand the growth pattern and you use a flower burst. That's when it really kind of becomes apparent the effect. That it's Another big reason for us to develop this product was to eradicate PGRs from the market. Yes, yeah. that's a big big priority for us yeah, guys is, yeah. from day one. Well, I mean, we're about safety. We always yeah, that. and that's really that's there's too many PGRs in the industry. You know that. Yeah. The, that many stores, ignorantly, not purpose like you, sell not knowing, because they're not biochemists, many stores, they're trying to learn with it, they know, they know fundamentals, but they're told, I mean, companies come in and they'll sell products, and it won't say to stay on the bottle. Some stores even ask, is it based on that, because they don't want to sell these products, and it's all nice. So, for us it was a really important issue, wasn't it? Yeah. So we came into the market and we wanted to create a product that works better than a PGR yeah. in the most kindest, safest way. You were saying that all the ones that are discouraging the use of synthetic PGRs, but unless you're giving somebody an alternative, a, a, re yeah, a reason a safe alternative, one that works better, and you know, the, the, and that's sort of the reason. Just for clarity, guys, what is a PGR for those who don't know? A, a PGR is a plant growth regulator. Plant, plant growth regulators, it's quite a broad term now. You see, plant growth regulators, we could say that you could call them watsons and cytokines, you can call them natural, but, but then they're more natural. Yeah, we're talking about synthetic chemical PGRs. So it's specifically designed, well, yeah, well, they're specifically designed in a laboratory to interfere with a particular life cycle of plant to, to force, use. Force, yeah, force it into flower. Yeah, and, and, and what, so they, what they do in general is they, make, they force the plant to put more emphasis on yield and less emphasis on quality. But the problem is, what, what, what's the problem with PGI in your opinion? What's the biggest issue? Well, the biggest problem well, with PGRs no. is the PGRs that are used, the plant growth regulators, the synthetic ones that are used in some products within our industry, are used, uh, are, are been designed for, again, crops that have got a much, much longer flowering cycle, primarily. The, the, the most used um, synthetic PGR um, called Pachybutrazole is actually designed for fruit trees. Now, fruit trees' um, growing period is obviously a lot, lot longer than a short flowering plant that's, um, you know, as such as the species, a short flowering plant that are most popular grows. So the problem is, is that the, the plant has a withholding period of that product. Now, with a fruit tree, because that's such a long season, it might have to elaborate for the growth. A lot, some growers are all realise that many nutrients or clusters nutrients, PGRs, plant growth regulators, very much similar to nitrogen, can't be forced from the plant. No. So that's where it becomes tricky, the plant can only expel it. Can't Definitely, it. yeah, by their nature, you know, the plant holds onto them. Now, 
eventually the plant will get rid of the food system, but it does take a very long growing cycle. Minimum of six weeks. Yeah. Like this yeah. Yeah. In agriculture, they've got a set time scale. Yeah. But us as a company, we don't agree with it full stop, no, do we? Full stop. That, that, that's one argument scientifically on the, on the agriculture. They still use them, but they're licensed to our well, They yeah. have to use them with strict guidelines. Absolutely. But yeah. The problem with our industry problem is our industry there's is no it. licensing and everyone would have to have a license yeah. all the way down the chain. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. So that's hence why you can't buy them. It's, they're illegal to be bought in stuff. So yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, ultimately, with, with plant growth regulators, What's bad about them, Dan? What, what's the worst thing? It, what most people would I mean, suggest. First and foremost, the jury it's would suggest. Yeah, it's carcinogen. The, 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 you know, there's no science to show that to, to show that these things are actually safe to, to, to consume in food crops. Um, you know, in fact, the science says opposite. They, you know, they're, they're seen, and, and you know, the FDA and various other bodies have now actually you know labelled them as, as a carcinogen. So, in short flowering crops like the popular rose growers, there's still some within the plant. So if you're if you're consuming the produce from that plant, or they could be because most growers have not got the means to test that. Well, you can't. You, there's exactly. No way you possibly know. So why risk it? Exactly. So so for us, it's about the fact that it's unsafe, dangerous. Also, the fact that uh, massively reduces your quality. Exactly. That's what I was going with. It interferes with the cycle. quality. Is reduced the quality is reduced. It's ridiculous. Right? Terpenoid and you and you flavour the inside. You know. Um, it forces the plants to form. Lack of sugars. Yeah, exactly. Forces all this energy into just building carbs and structure and, and no, no um, effort. So most of the, most of the time, your fruit, you fruit, your fruit, certain uh, uh, plant, uh, certain flower varieties are holding water in, in essence as well. They can swell, don't they, when, when people use their products. Yeah. So that's where the lack of quality is. Yeah, definitely. You've got more of a chance of rot. Yeah. You know, that's common just yeah. with that. Well, yeah, because it, it makes your fruits and your flowers. So it, it increases the density. Well, that's where you get the extra yield from. So that density. So that was that was a big driving point for us to kind of make a product like that. Yeah, because we knew that you but could also, achieve what you want to achieve without doing that. But also, we uh, many of those who've used the product have, have commented out how fast that they seem to be getting to the end of the cycle. But it's not really about that. It's about adding the extra quality and yield, isn't it? Yeah. If you go the full time. For me, all for me when I use it, that's yeah. all. I, well, well, I mean, it's, it's one of those sort of lessons you learn as a grower. Actually, after a while, you realise that patience is your friend. And you know, if you do leave it that little extra, little extra time, you know what the old adage is: you think it's ready, wait a week. Exactly. You know, and you may not see any, um, you know, any particularly uh, increase in by your eye. But you know, that's it's, it's building density all the time. It's good quality. You know, so. So, okay. So now a few questions on flower based. Um, so this is one of your newest products um, that you've recently brought to the market. When was best to use it? Um, in the early days, the first time we brought it out, we on um, some of the schedule, I'm not sure which one it was, if we were really adjusting everything, but it was, we recommended using it in the first week, first day of 12-12, for the first three weeks of the flower. But that's since been amended and our new schedule is it will show use through the full last week of your vegetative stage. So whatever the last week of your vegetative stage is, use it full length for that and then three weeks into flower. And also the usage is conflicting on bottle to schedule because if we weren't testing what's going on, we like we, we would we always willing to realise when we can make it better and make that change as well and go over and stick with what we've done. So yeah the, the usage is not 0.25 though. No. So the usage has changed from previous Yeah I think it's not it's not 0.25 on is it the bottle or what oh, the shit. schedule on the schedule but not on the bottle. So yeah, we've made that change a while back but not got everything you know out to the stores yet yeah. as, as far as scheduling and labeling and stuff like that. And we've got a new label coming so we're kind of waiting for that to so it's 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 so for you. And um, is this a product that you can foliate free uh, foliate on? Is it is there any benefit for doing it if so? Um, most of our nutrients could be for this product, but that's not how we recommend using it. Obviously, the silica, yes. Um, but really, the root feeding products, you're going to get more benefits with the root or taking the root load. And um, so, the, the basis of this product is to um, initiate flowering and yeah. um, increase flowering size. Yes. We leave the stress from the plant, give it the right amount of pea needs, right amount of cane, right amount of potassium. And 
add it extra as well and stuff that really make it work well, relieve the stress and feed it, feed the roots on and trigger that. Just give them that, that kick into early flower so you get faster flower sets. The, you know, growers have not used it, but we've been pretty surprised when we use it of how fast the flower sets come up and how many flower sets, how, how much more you get. And yeah, that's basically what it's for is to speed things up, increase that reliability and also increase the amount of flower sets. Yeah. Does, it, does it reduce stretch as a side sort of thing? It don't directly reduce stress, it's not like a PGR where it goes to stop growing. Yeah. What it does is it, it takes the the plants adjusting itself and it's it, when you go to 12 to 12 and your plants, all your plants want to do is throw down roots in order to get to the cycle. So what we're doing is we're giving it exactly what it needs to say, stop worrying about that, get on with flowering. So all the energy, because it pushes all the energy into flowering, that in itself. There's less energy in the vegetative stage now because it's all in the flower cycle. You're going to get slightly less stress. You still get vertical growth, it's a natural process, yeah. but it's going to be much less. So, what you get is internal spaces a lot closer together. So, your flower sites will you'll end up with you know, a lot more flower sites because the internal spaces are a lot closer together rather than you know, hit and miss. To a short, bushy, and nice plan to deal with Not exactly short, but. but Long, longer flowering sites with more flowering sites. A bit like you know, vines that you tomato, you're going to get a lot more vines than you, you, you would necessarily want to put other products. Again, this product is available in store and online at www.lonestopbrookshop.com.